Okay, let's take a look at surface integrals when the function is given to you explicitly. So that means that z is a function of x and y. And we are calculating the surface integral. Think of, about it like a, a double line integral. So what we have is a double integral over a surface. The inside function is generic function of x, y, and z. When it comes to the z, though, we need to replace all those z's with the function f of x, y. In the end, we just have f of x, y um, replacing the z. X's and y's everywhere. When it comes to ds, because, or d sigma here, because that we are uh, using a, a function that's given explicitly, then ds is the formula where you take the x partial and square, you take the y partial and square, you add one, you take a square root, and you multiply by da which can be dx dy or dy dx, or maybe even you could do it in polar. And it's over the region, which is the shadow region of your surface. So you have a surface and you're integrating over that surface and you actually end up doing a double integral over the shadow region. Um, back when, you had, when we did double integrals and there was a function inside that was finding the volume underneath the surface and above the region R, when that function's a one, what you're finding actually is the area of the region R. Now we get the analog with the line integrals, or what's in double dimension, uh, a surface integral. We have an interior function G, which behaves like the F from above, and then we have a DS. This is the surface integral. When G is a one, that's when we get surface area. Now beholds set of slides or videos on surface area in the many different ways that the function can come at you. Um, I'll link those down below in the description. So let's take a look at what's going on here. We have a function, a multivariable function, g of x, y, and z, and we're integrating this scalar function over the surface s, and we're, we're um, gonna replace ds with the formula that we have there and the surface S is projected onto the XY plane, and it's the footprint that we end up using as the region R. Here's a, just a simple, simplified version of, of such, a, such a situation. It won't always be like this, but it's nice when it is a nice rectangular region in the XY plane. And we gotta make sure that you know, the function G, the function F, the partial derivatives are all continuous throughout the region for us, for us to be able to do this. But um, if that's the case, then we can do the calculation. It turns into a double integral over the shadow region. Let's take a look at our first surface integral example. We'll do two. First up, we have that our multivariable function is 2z. S is the portion of the paraboloid. Whenever you see the word paraboloid, that's a bowl. And so the bowl has the equation 2z equals 1 plus x squared plus y squared. And that's going to be in the first octant. And it's going to be bounded by uh, x equals 0, that's the y-axis, uh, z equals 1, and the line y equals the squ square root of 3x. Okay. So z equals 1 is the cutoff vertically, so one unit off the xy plane. And then we have these, um, these two lines that are in the xy plane, x equals 0, the y-axis, and x equal uh, y equal the square root of 3 times x. This is the y equals mx. It goes to the origin. Our function solved for z, because we've got to have z equals uh, an explicit function. We just divide everything by 2. So z is 1 half plus 1 half x squared plus 1 half y squared. That's the description of our function explicitly. And ds, since we are explicitly, we take some partials, we square, and we have to plug into this formula. If we do see z's in our g formula, we need to replace those z's with the actual surface formula um, that we have here, f of x, y. The half plus half x squared plus half y squared. Okay, all right, let's take some partials. What is the partial with respect to x of our function z? It's just gonna be x. Partial with respect to y, it's just gonna be y. So when it's time to square these guys and add one, put a DA on it, we get one plus x squared plus y squared with the square root. When it's time to look at G and call it 2Z, instead of calling it 2Z, we put two times our surface formula, half of half x squared and half y squared, all added up together. 
double integral over s. Now we gotta figure out then, what is this region r? So we take a look at the shadow region. We have the y-axis, we have the line y equals rad 3x, and we have um, when z is equal to one, looking at the equation, we actually have a unit circle. We have x squared plus y squared equals one. So then r is gonna go from zero out to one. Now when it comes to theta, what happens there, when y is equal to root three x, that means that y over x is root three, and the tangent of theta is y over x. So root three is the tangent of theta, and that happens when theta is pi over three. That's our starting theta value, our ending theta value, pi over two. All right, all numerical. We can, we can put these two parts together. We have one plus r squared, the x squares and y squares. So we want to do this in polar because the region is circular in nature. So the x squared plus y squared is an r squared. And we're honestly looking at one plus r squared and rad one plus r squared, we put them together and we have um, the one plus r squared to the three halves power. Don't forget though, that dA becomes r dr d theta. So we have an extra factor of r there, but that's great because that can set us up nice for our use of. One second here. Okay, so we're gonna, u be the inside, one plus r squared. Then du is gonna be two r dr. So half of du is gonna take the place of r dr. And we'll have one half of u to the three halves. Add one to the exponent, you get five halves. Divide by five halves or multiply by two fifths. These twos cancel. And the antiderivative of this is going to be one fifth of u to the five halves. Put u back in as one plus r squared to the three halves. Oh, uh, that should say five halves. I apologize. And so we put a one in, and we're talking about two to the five halves. And we put a zero in, and we're talking about one to the five halves. Just keep the one fifth on the outside. When it comes time for the theta part, It'll end up being the difference between them. We have pi over two minus pi over three. And that's gonna be three pi minus two pi all over six or pi over six. So the result of this piece is pi over six, um, four to the five halves. That's um, five copies of two, sorry, two to the five halves. That's five copies of two. And then underneath the square root, every two of them comes out as a two. So two to the five halves is gonna be four root two. Okay, so that's a four root two. We have a one fifth. And so the one fifth and the pi over six give us our pi over 30. And then we have our four root two minus one. We calculated our first surface integral. Got to make sure we know what the surface looks like. We got to know what the shadow looks like. Got to make sure the function is explicitly defined to use this formula for ds. Don't forget though, if you see z's in your formula, your job is to replace those z's with the actual surface formula. That was our z being replaced. Okay, great. Let's see one more example. Here we go. So S's are going to be a cylinder this time. And we want the part of the cylinder that lies above the uh, vertices in this XY plane. Um, it's a square. Okay. We have a Z function, G of G function, capital G function, which is Z cubed. Z is given to us explicitly. It's a function of X and Y. And so because of that, then what we're going to do is use DS as, or D sigma here, as this, take the partial square, add them up together, add one, take a square root, and then dA. We gotta figure out what the shadow region is. And so, let's take the x partial. Our function is the square root of one minus x squared. So the x partial will be one over two square roots of that. Chain rule times the derivative of the inside with respect to x, which is a negative two x. These twos cancel. And you just end up with negative x on top of the radical. What about the y partial? 
I don't see any y's in the formula. So the y partial is zero. What do we do with these partials? We square them. So squaring the x partial, we're gonna get x squared, then underneath, the, uh, underneath that, we won't have a radical, we'll just have one minus x squared. And when we square the y partial, we get zero. And so we plug these guys into this formula, which is just gonna be one plus the x squared over one plus uh, one minus x squared. We write the one as one minus x squared, put them together and cancel out the x squares. So it turns out that what's underneath the radical is one over one minus x squared. Okay, great. So then ds or d sigma here is gonna be the root of that with a da on it. We'll figure out if we wanna do dx dy or dy dx or even polar. And so then when you say the square of the numerator and square of the denominator and we'll have one over rad one minus x squared da as our replacement to d sigma. Okay, great. We have z cubed. So if z is equal to the square root of one minus x squared, then the cube of that is the three halves power. So these guys go inside the double integral and we have to figure out what the, what the r value, uh, what the r region is. Now we're given this square, it's in the x, y plane, so that's gonna bound our region r. Let's take a look at the 3D version. I'm talking about a cone, I mean a, a cylinder. And so what I've shade, shaded here in pink is the actual surface. The upper half of the cylinder um, that uh, is above those four points in the xy plane. Well, we have r as the shadow of s in the xy plane. So for sure we don't want to do polar this time. And it doesn't really matter, we're, we're numerical. Uh, it's it's a iterated integral with, with numerical bounds. X's go from minus one to one and Y's go from minus one to one. And if you're to the three halves power and you divide by a square root, then you're to the first power. Oh, great, so this is a nice little simple integral. We could actually break it into two if we have numerical bounds and a separable integrand. So what we have then is the X integral times the Y integral. Integrating with respect to x, we get x minus x cubed over 3. Integrating with respect to y, we just get a y. Putting a 1 in, we get 1 minus a third. Now be careful, putting a negative 1 in, you get negative 1 plus a third. Subtracting those two, it ends up doubling up. You get a 2 thirds here minus a negative 2 thirds here. So 4 thirds for that part times the uh, 2 from, from this part. Put in a 1 minus a minus 1, that's a 2. Final answer then would be eight thirds. And that should be one of the choices here. Let me uh, move out the way a little bit. There we go, letter C, eight thirds. So we've calculated two surface integrals and hopefully that wasn't too bad of a calculation when the function is explicitly defined. All right, thank you very much. Uh, like and subscribe, comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.